Hundred viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's a 2007 Hondo Odyssey. It's got the big 3.5 in it. Customer complaint of no power, and that is a huge understatement. He should have said no power, like capital N, capital O. Uh, this thing will barely move. Give it some throttle, it just it's just unresponsive. You hear the throttle opening, you hear a little hoofing going on under the hood. Boo boo, and that's it. Uh, my gut, which is getting bigger by the day, tells me. Plugged exhaust or timing is way off, is what I'm thinking. Uh, let's get the battery tightened down and get a charger on it so we can run some tests. So with my hypothesis of possibly being a plugged exhaust or out of time, I'm curious if removing a spark plug, putting an in-cylinder pressure transducer in there, and checking the waveform if we can determine either or, if we can see if the valve timing is off, I am not the best at interpreting in-cylinder pressure waveforms, I'll be honest with you. There are some guys that are absolutely fantastic with it, uh, and I'm not. I can tell you if the exhaust is plugged, and I can tell you if the timing is way off, hopefully. Uh, two banks, there is, it is plausible that one bank could be on, one bank could be off, um, which would make them run kind of funny. If we pull this out and it looks like you know, looks the best that, uh, that I can tell and interpret that, you know, the exhaust isn't plugged or the timing is on. Uh, being that it's a Honda 3.5, they're quite easy to actually check the physical timing. Uh, it has a couple rubber plugs in it. We pop them out, we stick it on a lift, we bar the engine over, get number one at top dead center. We can look right in these little holes uh, in the timing cover and see if the engine is in time. So that's another uh, viable option. I'm just hoping that this way might be slightly faster. Five eighths. Oh, <laughs> I need a ratchet for that one. That spark plug felt loose. That's uh, that means somebody's been in there. Somebody changed it probably at some point. Never that tightened them up. So there's our plug, kind of tells us a little bit of the story. Does not look like it's running super lean. Uh, spark plug's pretty black. Uh, it's obviously been replaced because it has a Bosch Platinum in it, where this would have came with NGKs, or Denso at least. All right folks, so we've got the WPS 500 in the hole that we took out the number four cylinder, I think it is on a Hondu, four, five, six across the front. Uh, so now we're going to take, hopefully it cranks, it hasn't been very long, uh, we've had the battery charger set on semi-nuclear, why won't you focus? Focus? What the thunder? Is that better? Hey, there we go, welcome back. Uh, let's just crank it, we'll start it up, we'll see what happens on the screen. Uh, I think I've got this all set right, up to 500 PSI, we've got uh, 500 milliseconds, we'll add a little more time, let's see if it starts. Hold your horses. So that was a little bit of a full throttle event that we did. Let that baby go across here and come on. Okay, let's click back. Let's see what we have. Uh Abnormally high running compression. <laughs> um, also, you know what? We should have threw. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've put. We should have put a trigger on it so we could see where the spark timing was happening. Let's see. Let's get a zero psi line. Uh, uh, zero psi. That's what we want. So that's zero psi's. When our exhaust valve opens, it should be at zero PSI. And this is where the piston comes up, compresses, 
Now there's no combustion event, so the piston's just going to get dragged back down, uh, pulls down back into you know below atmospheric pressure, and then typically the exhaust valve opens around that area right there. So piston up, compresses, it gets dragged back down. Uh, doesn't really indicate we have any leaking valves because we're still, you know, in this negative pressure through here, whatever whatever that is, but the big concern is right here on the exhaust stroke. So compression, boom, would have fired, piston back down, coming back up for exhaust. Should have opened the atmospheric pressure. However, we have 22 PSI, and that was at an idle. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, let's go see what it did when we give it some shoe. Another thing I noticed too is that the, uh, the running compression is quite high. 166. That's weird. Let's look at when we gave it a bunch of shoe here. We have 40, what is it called? 40, 40 PSI of exhaust pressure. At a glance, the valve timing looks okay. I guess we could probably get some rulers on here. If I click the ruler button, phase ruler 720. So top dead center, bottom dead center, top dead center, bottom dead center. At a glance, the valve timing looks okay. I'm not an expert with it. Um, my belly was telling me this thing's got a plugged up, stuffed up exhaust. Now I guess the question is at this point, folks, uh, you know, here where I can see your faces. Uh, the question is, is it a, you know, the converter that's underneath the car? So the, this, I believe this car, if it's like any other Hondu, has three converters. So one on each bank, plus, you know, the main dog underneath that's not monitored. You know, no two cents around. Pretty notorious on these things for plugging up. Um, we could pull a rear spark plug out, stick the pressure transducer in there, and see if that one is, you know, also uh, showing high pressure. Then in that case, then we can either make the assumption either both upstreams are plugged or that single downstream. Definitely not a New York car. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of interesting that that rubber is broke. Is that from overextension like what we're talking? You know, maybe this thing has been plugged for so long that the uh, flex has actually grown. You know, it's all stretched out because look at that mount. See how that one's shoved back too? All right, but I don't get too excited because I see uh, we got a big old ding dong in there. That one's everything's pushed back. We got some junkyard rating on that. That's kind of weird. Maybe it's not junkyard rating. That one's pushed back. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That one's kind of tweaked over. Eh, that makes me wonder if there's some other damage because of the way that one's tweaked that one's not just shoved back it is kind of but um yeah who knows maybe this dent here you know maybe there's something else that really you know freaking wailed that thing it got it all kind of tweaked because you can see you can see right there she's had some road rash so anyways we won't get too excited i think what i was getting at is i was going to say i'm going to hedge my bets uh, being that this is not a New York car, I think I can be successful uh, just removing these three bolts, <laughs> firing it up, letting her bark. Uh, I've seen a number of these converters uh, plug up on these Hondu, especially when they start burning oil. I don't even know if I've had the torch out today. It's almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, spider. Ah, burn, baby. Got rid of that. I'm a gambler. Doesn't mean I'm confident. Not that confident. Let's see if we can't crack that baby loose now. 13's gonna be a little snug now. Oh! Ooh! Yeah! Well, I know you. There we go. Alright, 
Now you just want to reach up there and take that off, don't you? Word to the wise. Word to the wise. Don't. Unless you just can't stand it. Let's see if we can get it with the socket here. Come on, baby. Oh, I almost grabbed it. All right. So now we just got to pop it apart. Man, I could be wrong. Oh, I'm nervous now. Might have to break out the air hammer here. Yeah, let's get out the air hammer if we're gonna break something. This one looks like it's free. Um, see if we can't very gingerly just massage this. Oh, that's not ginger. for being ginger. More like full on Captain Caveman. Uh oh. That ain't dust baby. That's the that's the good stuff coming out of there. That's what that is. Oh she's loaded. Uh let's see. Oh my goodness, I think the whole front pipe's full. I wonder if it shit one of the front converters. I wonder if one of the front converters went bad and just came right in here to the back. It's kind of what it's looking like. I gotta see if I can get this separated. We're on the right track. Um, yucky. I wanna see, Erico, I wanna see. Oh, there you go, kid. I don't know what this is. This feels got some fluff to it. Interesting. It feels like the insulation that holds that front part of the catalyst in. Yeah, it feels like I'm poking in insulation. So that's interesting. And definitely the front half of this converter is MIA. And if it was my car, the rear half of it would be MIA too. However, as a professional, I cannot break EPA laws, so we won't. But if you wanted to test this, you could replace this with what they call a test pipe. This is a non-monitored converter, so it doesn't really matter if it's here or not. As far as the ECM is concerned, as far as the EPA, you take this out, you're going to prison. Going to the big house. Meet a guy named Bubba. He'll put Kool-Aid on your lips, make you look pretty. So we don't want to do that. So there Bubba's back of his head looks like a package of hot dogs. There we go. Lots of, lots of good stuff in there. Wow, big pile. Big pile of poo. Let's fire it up and see. I know what we can do. We can send this to Scotty Kilmer. He can wash it in that special solution he has. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Oh, I mean, oh shoot, we left the key on. No wonder it's taking forever to charge. All right, run flat. Put her in park. You guys ready for this? It's gonna be so awesome. Oh yeah, Chevy Thunder! I'd say it's fixed. I'm gonna lie. Come and get it, fella. Well, the old Italian tune-up wins again, folks. There she is. Uh, we could hear the VTEC ripping now. Mind you, I'm having a hard time not taking this thing down the road, but, you know, I look at the tires and I'm like, hey, probably shouldn't be out ripping on the VTEC, all right? Uh, not trying to be judgy. Uh, this is probably the least of this car's problems. This is what it needs, though. We need a converter. The big question is, you know, why did it fail? Is this thing, you know, consuming insane amounts of oil? What's the story? You know, did he have a misfire? I don't know. All I do know is that we hedged our bets and we won. 
Uh, why did I go for that instead of pulling a rear spark plug? Simply because the probability of having both upstream separate converters on each bank plugged was pretty low. Yes, the front one could have been plugged and the back one couldn't have been, but at that point, in my experience from working on you know V-type engines or multi-bank engines with multiple converters on each bank, if one plugs, usually it doesn't bring the engine to a screeching halt uh, like it did on this one. Usually it can overcome the front bank or the back bank, whichever one's plugged, uh, to a certain degree, and we have some other drivability problems at that point. This thing was just no way, no way, Jose. And we had what 20 some pounds of back pressure at an idle, so this thing is plugged, plug, plugged. Need to get a hold of this fella, need to find out what we're gonna do. Uh, it is not registered in the PR of New York, so that's great. Um, I don't know the laws regarding that, <laughs> so I gotta check into that. Uh, so hopefully, he wants to go for it. We'll get a converter, slap it on there. Hopefully he can give us a little more insight. You know, was it skipping? Is this thing, you know, glug, glug, glug with the oil? There's lots of oil inside the car, so that's my assumption. But what do I know? I do know one thing, and that's for you to go down there in the comments, the Insty, the Facebook, leave the comments, questions, the concerns, and just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.